Wow, God, God had to put the word surely. He didn't even put surely when he says he was wounded for our transgressions. And we are more familiar with that. But he put a surely when it came to Jesus carrying our diseases in Isaiah 53. So you are so excited over just one word because you are meditating on it. You know, we hear so much about meditation, and meditating on the Word of God and how it can transform our minds and our hearts. Tell us ab about the power of meditating on God's Word. Well, you know, if there's one thing, um, I've, I've shared this, uh, you know, here in my church uh, more than once, that uh, if you, there's one secret of a successful life, just we brought it to one. I know that we are making things very simple and, uh, you know, I... I I know that uh, some people might just say that it's too simplistic, right? But if there's one thing that the Bible says we can do, they will produce success that will cause us to be prosperous. It is meditate. And I'll, I'll show scripture for that. All right, Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. The fact that God said this book of the law must be that Joshua was reading that book for God to say this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate. Now, meditate is the Hebrew word haga, which is to mutter, mutter under your breath. Haga, meditate. And then the, the result will be, you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. So that's Joshua 1.8. If you look at Psalms 1, it says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the word of God. And in his law doth he meditate. Again, it's the he same Hebrew word, haga. In his law doth he mapa, day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted, not some wild tree growing by itself. Planted means there's care given to it. Someone planted him. Like, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Now, Scripture interprets Scripture. Leaf there is a type of your health and your healing. Your, your, your leaf will always be verdant. It will be green. You will be evergreen. You will stay young longer. Amen. Your leaf shall be green. Now, Scripture in uh, Revelation says, and the, the, you know, John saw the, the tree of life, and the leaves are for healing. The leaves are healing. Again, in Ezekiel, he saw the tree of life. Ezekiel saw the tree of life, and the leaves are for medicine. So we see that his leaves shall not wither, means your health will not wither. Even in your old age, you'll be evergreen, perpetually young. Amen. And then the next, the next phrase says, if you meditate on this word day and night, your, your leaf will always be green, and whatever you do shall prosper. Here we have another same word used in Joshua 1, 8, saleach, prosper. Wow. Saleach, same word here in Hebrew. So I see that, uh, you know, uh, today uh, people, are, uh, uh, people are so afraid to say health and prosperity, Right? But isn't this what these two scripture verses have declared? That if you meditate on God's word, you'll be prosperous. Your leaf will always be green. One of the biggest challenges we have in the medical world today is actually mental health. And you find that people are so focused on the wrong things all day long. They are meditating on the wrong thing. You see, people are meditating all the time, but they are meditating on the wrong thing. They look at the social media. It's full of negativism. They look at uh, the news and you know what the news is telling you, right? You don't get, you don't get things that are life-giving, things that are positive and radiant and robust with health and wholeness. And these things can only be found in the scriptures. So watch what you meditate what you put your mind on. Take a scripture verse and meditate on it. Memorize that verse. Just take one scripture verse. Take one verse from the healing scriptures and meditate on it and mutter it under your breath. It will cure you of Alzheimer's, I'll tell you that. You'll, at least you will keep Alzheimer's and dementia at bay. When you learn to memorize God's word, and God's word is life-giving, and wherever you memorize it, there it gives you life. Amen. So learn to memorize God's word and then when you wake up, you memorize it, okay? And then you meditate on it the whole day. 
every uh, uh, you know free moments you get, you mutter it. You mutter it. Surely he has borne my sicknesses. Surely. Why did God put surely there? Surely. Surely he has borne. You know, you get excited. You get so excited and, uh, and uh, wow, God, God had to put the word surely. He didn't even put surely when he says he was wounded for our transgressions. And we are more familiar with that. But he put a surely when it came to Jesus carrying our diseases in Isaiah 53. So you are so excited over just one word because you are meditating on it. I'm just giving you an example of, of, of what happens to me when I meditate on the Word of God. It's like I, I, I squeeze the juice out of it. All right, then I'm ready to go to our next scripture verse. Jesus said two things, but Mark's emphasis was on the first, what you hear, and look at Luke's emphasis. Therefore, take heed how you hear. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken from him. Now we found the clue to what the, the very thing that we shared just now. What is this having thing? Whoever has, has what? To him more be given. Now we see it. To the one who has this hearing attitude, hearing heart, wanting to hear the revelation of the Word, wanting to understand the Word. Whoever has this heart, not only he said, take heed what you hear, the subject itself, which is the Word of God. Take heed what you hear, but how you hear it. How you hear it. Hallelujah. For whoever has this uh, hearing heart, this hearing attitude towards God's Word, the Bible says, more, I like the word, say the word more, more will be given to you. And Jesus says, take heed what you hear and how you hear with the same measure you use. So if you use a 34 measure, you give 34 attention, 34 uh, uh, focus, 34 uh, devotion to it, it will be measured to you. Guess what? To you, you, it will be measured what? The same measure you use. Same measure you use, it will be measured to you. 34, you get what? Back 34 benefit. 34 virtue out of. 34 revelation. 34 wisdom. 34 harvest. Whatever verse it is you're meditating on, it's a verse on healing. You will receive healing but 34. And it's, it's saying this. It's not because it's God's will. It is saying it's your attitude. The same measure you use. If you listen to God's word of 100%, with the same measure, I, I'm using the measure of 100% percent attention to God's Word. So don't be distracted, friend. If you can, every Sunday, just give that, that time to the Lord. And isn't it amazing how the devil will always try to tell you to catch up on something you have not done during the whole week that you could have caught up on, but you didn't, right? You didn't do all those things. And all of a sudden, while you're listening to God's Word, the devil will say, you know what? You, have, you, didn't, you didn't read this book. You have not read this book. Hey, how about this? You didn't contact your friend. Hey, look at your phone. All right, there's a message that just came in. It's like all hell break loose sometimes, right? When you are about to receive God's Word. That's the warfare, my friend, is actually getting into God's Word. There are so many things trying to hold you back from hearing God's Word because the devil is so afraid. Yes, friend. He is afraid that you will receive God's Word because he knows that his influence and his power in that area of your life will be broken. Why? Because the Word of God is greater than him. Hallelujah. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.